His name was Rabbi Yisrael Misalant. Rabbi Yisrael Misalant says, the Rambam writes about 900 years ago that to do tshuva is really a four-step process. One, stop sinning. Stop. It's obvious. If you still have a boyfriend, you haven't started doing tshuva. If you still have a girlfriend, you still haven't done tshuva. You haven't started. You're still watching filthy movies. You haven't begun doing tshuva. You still violate Shabbat on purpose. Tshuva hasn't begun yet. First step, stop sinning. Stop sinning. Second step, make a fence. Meaning, evaluate your actions, your failures, and understand what are the triggers that cause you to fall for the trap of the Satan. You know that every time you go to certain places, on the internet or in person, you fail with Pgamabrit. You know that every time you go to certain places or hang out with certain people, you act promiscuous. You know that every time you go to certain areas or hang out with certain people, you end up eating non-kosher food or speak non-kosher language such as Lashonara, or cursing, or all the type of vile language. You know yourself when you're at your worst and when you're at your best. Make a fence means learn enough about the topic to know what's allowed, what's not allowed, but also evaluate yourself and put a fence around yourself in a sense where from now on, I have rules. I'm not like an animal, I have rules. From now on, I'm not allowing myself to go to such and such places. Why? Because every time I go to such and such places, I make sense. From now on, I'm not allowing myself to talk to such and such people. Why? Because every time I talk to them, I say Lashonara. I lie, I curse, I do this, I do that. From now on, yeah, what about if they call you? Well, you could just press uh, you know, that, that red button on your phone. Red button, I don't know, I press it all the time. People call, I just press the red button all the time. The red button, you just go automatic to a voicemail. That's it. Oh, what if they get offended? Let them get offended. It's better they get offended than Kadosh Baruch Hu gets offended. Make a fence for yourself. You can't go to certain places. You can't do certain things because that's the fence that's going to keep you pure. That's step number two. So we stop sinning. We put a fence around ourselves to not return back to the criminal world. If you're an alcoholic, that means you cannot go to bars or even a bar mitzvah that has alcohol in it. If you are a drug addict, that means you cannot even walk around in a neighborhood where you know that there are certain people that do it. You know, if you are a immoral person where you've done all types of uh, sex crimes, that means that you cannot hang out with certain people or even be next to certain people or speak certain things because that's what leads you to do and everybody knows themselves and so on and so forth so we stopped sinning we made a fence and the Rambam writes step number three regret your sins regret your sins your sins are terrible what you did say I'm sorry say I'm sorry it's very simple Step number four, when a Kadosh Baruch Hu tests you again with that same girl at that same place, you better pass that test. Why? Because that's when a Kadosh Baruch Hu is going to stamp, he is a Baal Tshuva. And at that day, those sins that you've made turn into from purposeful sins to accidental sins, meaning the judgment goes from level a million to a few hundred. Punishment was eternal to now, maybe a few weeks. And it can eventually turn into even mitzvot, depending if you continue growing in your tshuva. So what's the question then? Abi Yisrael Misalan says, I don't understand. Why is the regret step number three? Shouldn't it be step number one? Isn't that the reason why I'm changing in the first place? Because I regret my sins? And Rabbi Israel 
Misalant answers the questions for us. In the Sefer Or Israel, he says, the reason why you do tshuva has nothing to do with regretting your sins. In fact, when you first start doing tshuva, when you, start, when you first start repenting, when you first start changing your life, it is not because you regret your past crimes, but rather because you simply decide that you want a better life than what you have now. Yeah, you had fun going to the clubs and going to the beach and eating whatever you want. You had a good time. But you know that settling down with a nice tzaddikah, settling down with a nice tzaddik, is a better life. You know, have kids instead of boyfriends, have, have a house instead of, you know, vacation resorts, have a normal job instead of, you know, it's a better life. In the beginning, when you first put your kisulosh on, you're not regretting the time that you hung out at the club and you were doing all types of horrible things. No, you don't even think it's horrible. Why? Because when your friends come over, hey, girlfriend, hey, how are you? You remember when we went to that club and, was there, and that guy was there, yeah, we were dancing all night. You, you don't regret it at all. You don't regret it at all. Well, you had a good time. You went to the beach. You went to Cancun. You ate all types of animals you never saw before. You don't regret the fact that you took a bite. It was delicious. You actually say, how can we make a kosher version of this? How can we make a kosher lobster? How can we make a kosher pig? How can we make a kosher elephant? How do we make kosher everything? You like it. You're saying, now I want a better version. That's it. So how do I get to regret? B. Saimi Salan says... When you first start doing tshuva, you don't regret the girl that you were immoral with. When you first start doing tshuva, you don't regret the boy that you were immoral with. When you first start doing tshuva, you don't regret every single crime that you've made. Why? Because quite frankly, you don't even know why they're crimes. You just know that there's a better way to live. When are you going to know that you are a criminal? when you leave the garbage that you're in for long enough time to realize that the foul smell was coming from you. When you live in the garbage like a rat, you don't realize you're living in garbage. Why? Because it's your house. You don't call your house garbage. You live there. The mouse and the rat don't wake up in the morning and say, I can't stand this dump. He doesn't say that. He says, look at my house. It's a beautiful house. I got a box with roaches over there. I got a box with tomatoes over there that are run almost perfect. I got... He doesn't think it's a dump. He thinks that's my house. When your life is full of sins and filth, you don't think bad of it. Why? That's your filth. It's your stuff. So when you first start into doing tshuva, you don't think of it as filthy, gross, ugly, disgusting, despicable. No, you're thinking it's my life. What's the problem? I'm just going in the better direction. But then, Rabotai Karim, when you spend enough time coming to the shiul instead of going to the club, you spend enough time reading the book instead of watching television, you spend enough time talking to HaKadosh Baruch Hu instead of talking Lashon Hara. Guess what happens? You're leaving that filthy dump. Because now you're putting yourself a fence where you say, you know what, I'm not going back to that place because I want a better way. Not because I don't like Cancun and I don't like pork and I don't like all the garbage. It's just that there's a better way. But after a while, of, you know, putting that fence and learning about Hashem, little by little, time passes. And you haven't been in that dump for a while. And you figure, you know what? Let me look back. How's, how, let, me, let me see some pictures of back home. And you look at back home, it's like, Hashem Yishmo, I used to live there? What, what's the matter with me? Look at that haircut I used to have. What, what was I? For a contest of ugly people? What did I, was I doing? Why did I wear that clothes? Why did I, what's that look on my face? Why did I get that tattoo? What's the matter with me? Who would put something on their face forever? Am I crazy? And you start looking at the filth of your past and you realize, what's the matter with me? How come you didn't say it when you were in it? Because you were in it. 
When you live in the garbage, you don't realize it's garbage, but once you walk out of the garbage for long enough time, you get enough separation from the filth to allow yourself to realize, yes, there's still a smell, but I feel like it's behind me. Then you realize, oh, that's what I left behind. And that's when the regret comes in. That's why the Rambam writes the third step of tshuva is regret. It cannot be the first step. Because in the beginning you don't even know why it's not allowed. You don't even know why it's not allowed to drive on Shabbat. You don't even know why it's not allowed to eat whatever you want. You don't even know why it's not allowed to have a new wife every week. You don't even know why it's not allowed to do whatever it is that you feel like doing because it makes you feel good. You don't know why. But after you've separated yourself from the sin for long enough time, and on top of it, you've done enough mitzvot to start purifying your neshama. You start realizing that the foul smell from your sins is behind you and you want to make sure to keep it behind you. And you start realizing that you have made the best choice in your life subconsciously. You didn't even realize how good the choice was until you got away from it. Until you got away from that filth. And Rabbi Islami Salan says at that point, when you regret the sin, that's when you've officially become a Baal Tshuva. The Hashem will test you again. And if you pass it, Hashem signs off. He or she is a Baal Tshuva. Now, if you simply stop the sin, but you don't regret it, you're not a Baal Tshuva. You're just a monkey that changed clothes. If you went from going to nightclubs to going to the synagogue, that doesn't make you a Baal Tshuva. It just means your entertainment places have changed. That's all it means. If you have changed your hat that looks like a baseball team to a keeper, it doesn't make you a Baal Tshuva. It just means that your fashion expression has changed. Your style has changed. You feel like a Yamaka is cool today. Maybe next month it's going to be a hat again. A Baal Tshuva is someone that has distanced himself or herself from the sin for long enough time to realize why it's disgusting to do all of those things and becomes simply disgusted from their past to no longer want to do it. You don't want to go back to that girl, to that boy, to that pig, to that donkey. You don't want to go back there. Well, it's gross. So that means that if you have been going to synagogue for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, but you still reminisce with your friends about going to some nightclub, by the way, you haven't done tshuva for 20 years. You just changed your fashion statement for 20 years. You've been reading books for 20, but you haven't done tshuva. And guess what? A huge amount of people, a huge amount of people think of themselves as baalet tshuva, even though they still not only talk about their past, they admire their past. They tell their kids about their past. They say, hey, listen, when I was your age, I am well religious now, so don't do what I did, kid. But I had like 10 girlfriends at your age, kid. Yeah, that was the life back then. But no, no, you have a better life. You have a better life. Then he's surprised the kid goes off the deck a week later. He's surprised. He tells his kid about all the sins in the world that he made, and he's surprised the kid doesn't want to go to yeshiva anymore. Yeah, this looks like nice on you, honey. Yeah, you know, I, I had a different, a different, a, uh, I had a different style than you when I was there. What, Ima? What did you have? What kind of style? Oh, you want to see pictures of me when I was your age? Oh, and she shows uh, how she looked like a, practically a prostitute when she was her age, non-religious, and then she's surprised that her daughter doesn't want to be religious a week later. She shows her pictures of herself when she was 16, 18, and sinning. Why? She never regretted being like that. That means she hasn't done tshuva. He hasn't done tshuva. Third step of tshuva is regretting the sin. Regretting the sin. Once a person 
regrets the sin, that's when HaKadosh Baruch Hu tests him, and that's when HaKadosh Baruch Hu can sign off on whether you've become a real Baal Tshuva or not. Now, if a person makes a crime against the Shem that was very pleasurable. Everyone could understand what kind of crime that could be. An immorality crime, whether with a person or by themselves, how can you get to a point of regretting that crime? I mean, after all, it was pleasant. You had a good time. How can you regret such a crime? Watch my shoe about Genom. Watch my shurim about tikkun abrit, wasting seed. Watch them over and over again. Understand the magnitude of the sin. Understand how much Hashem detests that particular sin and that particular subject altogether and how holy a relationship is supposed to be. One of the shurim that we have on the USB and on the playlist of Tikkun Abrit is a shir called Kosher Intimacy. Look at what you did versus what it's supposed to be. And you see how you acted outright like a beast that you can find in a zoo. And the way you're supposed to be is like an angel. Both are fun. It's just that one type of fun goes to Genom permanently. The other type of fun is Kedusha and goes to Gan Eden permanently. To, to just a prince. Both are fun, just that one of them ends up in Genom. Now, when a person understands how much Hashem has given us the ability to enjoy ourselves, but simply in a kosher way, and yet we chose the non-kosher way, the animalistic way. And you learn more and more about it, you start realizing what a mistake you've made. And you start realizing, wait a minute, I made this mistake with no other than Hashem's daughter. Now it's bad enough that you made this mistake of wasting seed. It's bad enough that you made this mistake of being immoral. It's bad enough. Now when you start realizing, wait a minute, I'm such a fool. What an idiot. Not only did I make this sin crime against the king, I did it with his daughter. I did it with, I mean, when you start analyzing, what, what did you do? One, two, five, a hundred, how many daughters? You took HaKadosh Baruch Hu's daughters. And it's not only you made the sin with them. Not only you made the immoral crime with them, but on top of this, you offended them. On top of this, you broke their heart. On top of this, you yelled at them. You insulted them. You destroyed their confidence. You destroyed their, their psyche. For the rest of their lives, they're always going to remember, you are the guy that broke my heart. You are the guy that I lost my confidence with. You are the guy that I thought I was going to marry that ended up leaving me a week later. And who is that girl? That's a kadosh. That's the king's daughter. You did it. You start realizing, not only I went against the king, not only did he watch me do it, on top of it, I did it with his daughter. The deeper you analyze it, easier it is to regret. So much so that at some point you start crying. Why? You realize what kind of trouble you're in. At that moment, that's when you become a Baal Tshuva. That's when you become a Baal Tshuva. But if you're still admiring your past, you're still showing your daughter the half a dress that you used to wear as a full dress. You're still admiring the pictures of yourself with practically underwear. You're still admiring yourself in the past criminal life. You haven't even begun. You haven't begun. This is why Rabotai, it's very important to use your imagination when you're talking about sins. Not your imagination of how the sin looks like, but rather what's the outcome of the sin after a Kadosh Baruch Hu catches you red-handed. Not the five seconds or five minutes of pleasure. Not that your imagination. 
It's a little while later, when a Kadosh Baruch Hu sends those Malachi Chabala to start investigating different parts of your organs with no limitations of a physical body, but a magnification of pain times 60. With all types of wonderful tools that you've never even imagined exist. And no limit to how much pain a person can endure, because at this point it's purely a neshama that has no limitations, like a body does. Because a body, if it experiences a certain amount of pain, it could literally die from pain. A neshama doesn't. A person understands that, he doesn't want to say it anymore. It's not worth it. Why? Am I crazy? Am I, cra- am I crazy person? This is what you need to do. Not should do. You need to do. In order to arrive at a point where you at least have the test under control. It doesn't mean you're going to become tzaddik never sin again. But at least get yourself under control where you're not some crazy person. One day you're in a synagogue learning Gemara, then five hours later you're making a crime against the Shem and he's watching you. So many bachurim, so many bachuro, different p- people, young people, old people, tell me, listen, I don't understand. I go to yeshiva, I go to a seminar, I do this, I do that, but I still make crimes against the Shem that uh, a secular person makes the same crimes. How? You haven't used your imagination the right way. You only used your imagination to picture yourself making the crime, but not yet picture yourself receiving the punishment of the crime. You need to use your imagination for that too. Why? That's going to help you stop. It's going to help you stop. We should try to do this as soon as possible, but even more so now before Yom Kippur. Why? Because whatever decree we had on Rosh Hashanah, surely getting ourselves to do a little bit more tshuva will help. Will help in the next few days get a better decree in the following year. B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the Shurim that we do, myself, Rav Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat